When you create CGI assets and you render them, you always need a background. Traditionally, you have two possibilities. Either you take an HDRI background, which is very good for still renderings, and is very fast and always 100% photoreal. But if you want to do camera movement, you will need a 3D background. Usually you create a full 3D environment and add textures and lighting. And this results in a very high effort and making it photoreal is real hard. Today I want to show you something I am using for my projects which is a 3D mapped HDRI. It tries to combine the advantages of both techniques to create a very realistic background, which is created fast and still allows for camera movement. For this project, I will be using Blender 2.8 and an HDRI from hdrihaven.com. And I will be using Adobe Photoshop to modify the HDRI. You will need basic knowledge in both of the programs but we don't do anything too complicated okay now that we are on blender the first thing I will do is load the HDRI as a background image I will be using an HDRI from hdrihaven.com be sure to check them out I will link it in the description and support them if possible I will switch to shaded mode. This can take a couple seconds depending on your PC. Now we can see the HDRI as background. But as soon as you move the camera, it becomes apparent that it is not real 3D. What I will be doing is use this cube to map the HDRI onto a 3D mesh. To do this, I will go into the shader. I will choose an emission shader and choose the environment texture I have loaded as image. This will map the HDRI onto the mesh I am editing. The first thing I will do is adjust the rotation so we match the room and then I will start adjusting the scale to fit the corners of the room. I will switch to local mode, so I always maintain my directions and axis. First, I will try to match the far end of the room. It's quite good if you go inside, so you can see where the edges of the box are. Now we can see our first result. We have the basic cube shape mapped out and we can already move the camera a bit, but new objects still look very odd when moving away from the zero point. So now I will start mapping out some cubes and try to match the pillars. It's quite nice to do this in a top or bottom view so you can easily see where they are and how big they are. I will hide the top of the cube for now so it's easier to navigate the camera. I will adjust the cubes so the map so they match the HDRI. So now we already have a rough estimate of what our room looks like. I will also map out two of the cars in a very rough cube shape so we have a bit of 3D on them
Now one problem we have is that both the pillar is visible on the geometry itself and then behind on the floor and on the wall. So to fix this we will go into Photoshop and we will make one variation of the HGRI where the pillars are removed. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop. I have opened the HGRI image and I will be using this tool to mask out the near pillars and the cars we want to have in 3D. I will be using shift to add to the selection. Now that I have selected most close objects, I will just use right click, fill and fill the areas content aware. This gives a very fast and dirty result and I will save the image as a copy so I can use it in Blender. Now back in Blender I will create a second material and do the same as before but this time I will use the new HDR texture which has the new objects removed. I will then apply this material to the outer cube. So this gives us a very quick and fast environment where we can move our camera to a certain degree and still have very high realistic and fast results. Depending on how much you move your camera, you might want to add more objects to the 3D and remove them from the background HDR. Here is a personal project where I used this exact environment and you can see with a bit of blur in the background it is very hard to tell from a real environment and you have very realistic lighting and it looks nice. What I did here in the background shader is I blended the normal emission shader with a diffuse shader where it is close to the camera so I can get real-time lights and shadows on the background image. To do this I am using a circular falloff node. As you can here, see here it just creates a circle and scales it and I'm using this to blend between an emission and a diffuse shader which both read from the same HDR background. By doing this I can have real-time 3D lights and shadows on the background which is close to the rendered object and it helps ground the object in the scene. Thank you for watching and be sure to drop a like.